So in Luke chapter 11, the reading today is from chapter 10, but in Luke chapter 11, in a section that we will not read on a Sunday morning, Jesus is being pressured by some of those who are questioning what he's doing. Pharisees, religious leaders, who see that something's up. And they say, they say that he indeed is casting out demons in the name of Beelzebul. That's not a very nice sort of thing. And here's Jesus' response to them. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come to you. So this morning, we hear what takes place before that when Jesus sends out people who have been following him. 70, 72, number doesn't matter. These are people, not only the 12, but others who have been following Jesus. They've been listening to him. They've been watching what he's doing. They've been witnessing the kingdom of God coming near. They're captivated by what Jesus is doing. And he sends them out in pairs to go ahead of him to where he hoped to go. Where he himself wanted to show up. And we heard what, he, what they were told to do. They were told to go speak a word of peace. And if people accepted that, good and well. If they didn't, the peace would return to them. They lost nothing. And then they were to heal those who were there. Cure. Cast out demons. They were proclaiming the kingdom of God has come near. The point being... God is breaking into this creation that's hurting, that's not whole, that's broken. Walter Wink writes, An act of deliverance of a person is the intercession of God's presence and power to liberate those who have been possessed by the powers of death. Can we see that that's what God is up to. God comes to us in His very own Son, becoming fully flesh, fully human, fully God, and there is carrying the presence of the Almighty into the creation that God never stopped loving. I'm going to see, this is better. A little less feedback. That God's presence is coming into the here and now of the moment to bring people to wholeness and to hope, to change lives, to redirect. Remember at the beginning of the Gospels, we hear Jesus proclaiming, repent for the kingdom of God has come near. Have a change of heart and mind. But Jesus also deals with reality. He knows what humans are like. Why do you think Jesus said, go and proclaim, peace be to this house. If there's a person of peace, they'll receive it and welcome you. If not, it'll come back to you. Because Jesus knows what humans are like. We sometimes are so caught up in our own moments, our own issues, that we can't even, nor do we even want to see what God is up to. Someone long ago said that, you know, I'd rather deal with the demons that I know than the ones I don't. The idea being, I, you know, if I know that I'm a dog and I get kicked every time I go outside, I learn to live with knowing I'll be kicked every time I go outside, and at least I know what I'm dealing with. Sometimes we are so captured by the, the spirit of death, if you will, that we'll stay in our little hovel of pain. That what Jesus is speaking to us and he sends out his followers 
is to speak a word of life and of liberation. God has more for you. God has life for you. God has hope for you. And what starts to unfold is just that. We start seeing life coming about and people's hearts and minds being changed as they're liberated to new life, becoming a new creation. When the Word of God appears to Saul on the road to Damascus, he is transformed by Jesus' presence. He's made whole in a new way. And he goes from being a persecutor to a proclaimer of Christ. Is all well? Is all well, ladies? Thank you. There's a story of what Pastor Victor Albert was like in this congregation, in this very room, and the word was stern. So, good old German pastors, they knew how to do that well. So back to where what we're talking about, folks, is we hear this story and we can say, okay, that was way back then. Here's the reality. God has come to you in the waters of baptism. God has reached out to your very being saying, you are loved by me. I claim you. I give you freedom from your sin. I make you whole. You are free now to live in that love, both in how we manage in our own lives, but then how we live in this world. Imagine Jesus then saying to you today, folks, I'm sending you. Yes, you. You with the gray hair. You with the brown hair. You with the red hair, you with the blonde hair, you with no hair. I'm sending you. I'm sending you out to places and people I want to meet who I've not yet met. I'm sending you. Today, now, when you go out, proclaim the word of peace. Now, I'm not sure what the 21st century version of that might be. It might be a bit weird to go up to our neighbor and say, Peace. They might just look at us a bit strange. You find the word. You find the way. But it be bring into their presence the love of God. Because I'll tell you, our world sir needs it. Go stand in line this weekend at any of the stores or any of the restaurants that you don't have a reservation for yet. Or drive, you know, my favorite example, drive in Houston. It doesn't take much to see that we don't live in a world of peace very easily. Yet we need that. And people need to know the kingdom of God has come near. I have a friend who adopted two children. Two children that nobody else wanted. Unless they're a baby, nobody wants them. Or that's what it's thought. She adopted two boys. Those boys inherited more than their share of difficulties. One is in an 18-month program if he can make it. He's not even 14 yet. If he doesn't make it, he'll be in the penal system. Younger brother, following suit single parent that my friend needs to know the kingdom of God has come near not necessarily the literalness of a word but of God in break God is present even there in the brokenness to speak hope and encouragement we have people who are sick some who are facing things that are horrifically scary. They need the kingdom of God's presence with them 
in a word of hope, in a word that reminds us that God journeys with for us, not against us. You see, our world needs what Jesus sends those 70 out to do, and Jesus is still sending today. It's us. One of the concepts that I've struggled with in the 20th and into the 21st century is the understanding of church, that I go to church to get everything, that it's all about what I personally get out of church. That's very consumer-driven, isn't it? If I don't like what I'm getting at church, then I'll shop around to find until I get what I do want at church. Yet the concept of church has never been about consuming. It's a bit about coming together as real human beings, sinful human beings who are loved and forgiven by God and Jesus Christ, who come before God with worship and praise and go out to live that, to be that in the real world. To be that in our offices where we work, in the clubs where we go to party and be with friends, in our neighborhoods, to be that good news for others. How many people have gone forth from these doors, starting in the 1860s, 1850 over in that building, in the, the square part right over here, how many people have gone out to give that word of peace, and to carry the promise that the kingdom of God has come near. May we do that, recognizing that God wants all human beings to know that the kingdom of God has come near. And lives will and are changed. 